everyone, this is Kalimara here, and no, it's not Calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you want to join the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. First things first, I want to thank you so much for the love you showed on my Twilight Sparkle redesign, and it's because that video performed so well that I can bring you this one. And this video is one that I knew I wanted to make if there was enough interest in a My Little Pony redesign series because My Little Pony was a special childhood interest of mine. I was such a horse girl growing up and I still am, it's not even funny. My dream job when I was 4 or 5 was to be a professional horseback rider, like in dressage and cross country competitions and stuff, purely so I could ride horses all the time. Do I still fantasize of pursuing this today? No. Because I have the ranch of Rivershine to compensate for that. This will be relevant later, I promise. But the reason I was so eager to do a video on Applejack was because in the year 2021, I watched Jenny Nicholson's video, The Last BronyCon, A Fandom Autopsy. And suffice to say, I came out of that video a Jenny stan. See, the way I tend to function on YouTube is I find a channel that covers extremely niche and unusual topics, and then they become my favorite person and their videos are the only thing I would watch for a span of a few months up to a year. And in 2021, that person was Jenny Nicholson. I basically binged all of the videos that were available on her channel. My personal favorites are her deep dive on Pandora, her review of the Hallmark YouTube channel, oh, and of course, her deep dive into Evermore, which I must have watched at least 10 times since it was posted. That's about 40 hours of watch time just for me alone. And so it was inevitable that I came across her video titled, The Applejack Problem. What? Applejack problem? Who has a problem with Applejack? I love Applejack. Well, I'll let Jenny describe it herself. Every like 10 years, they reboot the My Little Pony franchise. It's tradition. And we're coming up on the newest reboot cycle, which would be Generation 5. G5. And I guess it is going forward because some hackers leaked a bunch of content, allegedly from Hasbro, about how it's all gonna go down. And that's not okay but I read it. It was super interesting to see all the inside talk about how they were gonna change the show. And to me, the most interesting was the Applejack problem. See, the current My Little Pony has six characters and they're all kind of common personality archetypes. So you have like the tomboy and the bookworm. And then the sixth one is just a cowgirl. Like, like, cowboy is a personality type. And, and this is a thing that I guess didn't resonate well with little girls, go figure. But what they were discussing in the emails is that this might mean some major changes to Applejack. Like, getting rid of her, or making her an antagonist, or making her a boy? And they were like, whatever we do, we definitely should not make her southern or a farmer anymore. And I was like, no. We can't, we can't lose Applejack. Like, like, can make her what? Like, the song and dance pony? Applejack is the weirdest thing in My Little Pony, and she can't go anywhere. And I was like, how would I solve the Applejack problem? So to boil it all down, Hasbro noticed that little girls, who were the actual target audience of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, lest we forget, had a hard time relating to Applejack, and as a result, she was kind of unpopular compared to the rest of the main six as far as toy sales went. And that's Hasbro's main source of income, and the reason they invest in animated series. So they needed to figure out what to do about their Applejack problem, and how to mitigate a similar problem for Gen 5. And this is all a very roundabout way of saying, if Applejack wasn't a farm girl, what would she be? And to that, I pose the question, at this point, with how distinctly Gen 4 has characterized her, if Applejack wasn't a southern apple farmer, would she still be Applejack? Probably not. The farm girl identity is so inextricably linked to Applejack the character that changing it might as well be creating a completely new character who would only be Applejack in name alone. And that was what they did. Kind of. 
The leaks that Jenny talks about came out six years ago, when people were still theorizing that Hasbro was going to reuse the main cast of Generation 4 for Generation 5. Well, we're in the future now, and Generation 5 is out. And the solution they ended up going with was featuring a brand new cast of characters, which I personally think is for the best because it helps separate the different generations from each other and falls in line with how Hasbro has always done their reboots. But they did also add a boy in the main cast of characters for the first time in My Little Pony history, which kind of made me think that Hasbro did just make their new Applejack stand-in a boy. Of course, it weren't saying that this is purely personal speculation, but you can't tell me that Hitch Trailblazer isn't just Applejack stripped of all her southern farming aspects and made into a cop, with a sprinkling of Fluttershy for his special talent. Because I'd argue the cowboy part is still kinda there. So I guess I'm on the boat that Applejack will always be an apple farmer in her family farm of sweet apple acres. And that's integral to her character. And that's why for my redesign, of course I will be keeping the cowgirl theme we all know and love. But before we get into that, random question. Are you someone who has way too many OCs with dedicated art and lore pieces of said OCs that are scattered all over the place because you don't even know how you would begin to organize it? Like, sure, a Google Doc works, but wouldn't you rather have something more organized and pretty to look at? Of course you do. If this sounds like you, allow me to introduce you to today's sponsor, Unveil. Unveil is a new inclusive platform for artists, writers, world builders, and character creators to compile and organize information about their OCs. Whether you do D&D, text roleplay, are part of a fandom, or writing an original story, Unveil is perfect for all your archival needs. It is completely free to use, anti-AI art, never NFT, and they have one of the kindest, most inclusive communities around. When Unveil reached out to me to sponsor this video, I immediately went and made a page for my character, Colette. And not only can you create a gallery specifically for your character, there's also a special traits tab where you can put all the little details you need to know about them. You can even add your own traits if they aren't listed already. Now I finally have somewhere to keep all these menial details about my OC that only I care about. And that's not all. I'm also able to organize characters by worlds, which essentially work as folders. Here you can see me making an entry for Bougainville, which I can then add Colette into. If you're interested in using Unveil for your character creation needs, you can use the link in my description to let them know I sent you. Thank you so much to Unveil for sponsoring this video. So let's talk about what I want to do with AJ's design. Previously in my Twilight redesign, I mentioned that I wanted to differentiate the builds of the different types of ponies. For unicorns, I wanted a slender, willowy form that is more dainty and ethereal than regular horses, because they have magic and don't have to rely on their physical strength as much. And for earth ponies, they would be the complete opposite. I wanted to make them sturdy and solid, like they're meant for physical labor. I'd say the original basic pony body accomplishes this quite well already, so I didn't have to change that much aside from giving her a thicker neck and visible hooves, which if you watched my first redesign video, you would know is a trait exclusive to the big strong stallion body type and bulk biceps who I completely forgot about. However, in my redesign universe, this would be a trait that all earth ponies have, because their hooves are their connection to the earth, so it's symbolic. I then go about drawing Applejack's eyes, which are very simple because they're just two big ovals. And fun fact, this is also the case for Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie, with the only difference being their eyelash shapes and placement. The other half of the main six get their own unique eye shapes. I'd say compared to Rainbow Dash, AJ has thicker and curlier eyelashes, whereas Dash's eyelashes are more straight, and Pinkie Pie has an additional three lower lashes. I knew that I wanted to give AJ a braid as opposed to her regular low ponytail because I think there isn't anything as quintessentially country as a cowgirl with braids, and it's actually a lot more practical because your hair is less likely to get in the way. And it's also an actual hairstyle that real horses get when they do dressage. But I wanted my design to be distinct, so I played around with her mane a bit more by giving her an additional thinner braid to go down the side of her face. That didn't work out. 
To match her mane, I also decided to have her tail in a braid as well for practicality and coherence and I realized a bit too late that I basically just recreated Applejack's grand galloping gala look just for her everyday wear. And you know what? I think that is a testament to the fact that this is a good design for Applejack and canonically something she would wear. I started detailing the tail braid and I gotta be honest, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with braids. On one hand, I think they're so fun to draw and so visually appealing, but on the other hand, figuring out the shape and which side goes over and which one goes under is a bit of a challenge, but in an enjoyable way, I find. This took a little while to perfect until I got it to a point where I was happy with it. But anyway, I then add Applejack's cowboy hat and she's starting to look more like herself. And after that, I started on her cutie mark which are just three apples and much less complex than what I had to do with Twilight's cutie mark. I began cleaning up the sketch in preparation for the line art. Also, has anyone else noticed that the unicorn ponies with the strongest affinity for magic who would then go on to become disciples of the alicorn princesses have some sort of celestial object or phenomenon in their name and cutie mark plus a synonym of shining? For example, obviously we have Twilight Sparkle, Sunset Shimmer, Starlight Glimmer, and Sunburst. I got a sudden inspiration to redo AJ's fringes as well, to further make the design my own. I went for a longer, swoopy hairstyle that would connect to her braid, and I was careful not to tread on Rarity's territory because she has a similar hairstyle. But I just felt that this would make her seem more like a country girl, because based on Curtis Connors' highly scientific and factual video, Country Girls of TikTok, most country girls don't really keep short fringes. They prefer to grow it out and have their hair all the same length. And after I added that loose strand of hair, I knew that this was my ultimate Applejack design. She was perfect. For the lines, I used the basic turnip pen on Clip Studio Paint on a vector layer to try and emulate the show's official art style as best as I could. Usually I like to be more dynamic with my lines, but MLP's flash animation necessitates consistent line weights throughout the character's design. While I line, let me tell you about Applejack in the older generations. See, among the main six, Applejack is definitely the most consistent and unchanged. Even back in Generation 1, she still ran an apple farm that all the little ponies in the kingdom enjoyed, though her personality was definitely different and much less developed compared to her G4 incarnation. Applejack in Gen 1 was clumsy, silly, and pretty unlucky, but she was sweet and of course, she loved apples. You might think this is a drastic change from G4 Applejack and personality-wise, yes, but compared to the overhauls that the other ponies got, hers was actually pretty mild. They more so added on to her character than they took away and changed, and appearance-wise, G1 Applejack and G4 Applejack are pretty much identical. Same orange coat, same blonde mane and tail, same white freckles, and same apple cutie mark, though G1 Applejack has 5 apples as opposed to 3. Just based on generational differences alone, I already know which pony I'm redesigning next. But the first time I was introduced to Applejack was through the movie Rescue at Midnight Castle, which was actually also the first time we got introduced to Twilight Sparkle and Spike. She and Twilight Sparkle were part of the rescue team that set out to save the ponies that had been abducted by T-Rex. And yes, T-Rex was also in this movie as the main villain. Unfortunately, she ended up being captured and transformed into a dragon to pull T-Rex's chariot of midnight. But she was saved in the end. Aside from that movie, I'm pretty sure she also appeared in some MLP comics as well, but I never read the comics, so I wouldn't know. Now, the interesting thing about Gen 1 MLP is that not only did it feature human characters as part of the main cast, the main protagonist was actually a human character named Megan, with the ponies mostly acting as her traveling companions and accessories. But this was changed in the later generations which focused exclusively on the ponies and I'm really glad they made that decision because the ponies were what I cared about. Basically, Gen 1 MLP was like Netflix's reboot of Spirit compared to the original Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron. 
In other words, it was horse girl wish fulfillment. But I'll be damned if G1 MLP didn't have me wishing that I could ride around on winged and horned ponies that could talk and had special talents. Still, I highly recommend you guys check out the movie. The whole thing is available for free on YouTube as well as some episodes from Generation 3. Though I will say, the animation quality is definitely dated, the story pacing is pretty rough, and oh, it's a musical of course, and the characters break into song at very odd times in the movie. It's also way more dark and terrifying than the modern generations. It's actually kind of awesome how metal they went with cute little ponies meant to appeal to little girls. Now that the lines are all finished, this is where Ranch of Rivershine comes in. See, Ranch of Rivershine is a horse ranch simulator where you acquire horses either by purchasing them through auctions or catching them in the wild. And then you get to train them up, compete with them in cross-country competitions, breed them together to make even better horses, and sell them if you want. The point here is that it goes very in-depth with the different types of coat patterns horses can have, along with their very specific terminology. And since playing that game, I have become very proficient and knowledgeable on this terminology and the kinds of patterns that may occur on a horse. And obviously this is very relevant and beneficial for redesigning horse characters from a cute little horse show. So for Applejack, I decided on a Tobiano pattern because with the right colors, they look a lot like the spotting on a dairy cow, which of course is quintessential of farms and cowgirls. And now she can be a literal cowgirl! Also as far as colors go, I would say Applejack is actually the most realistically colored pony because I'm pretty sure she was supposed to be a Palomino, which is a genetic color in horses consisting of a gold coat and white mane and tail. Wouldn't you say this looks a lot like Applejack? Oh, and fun little trivia for you, this is actually the coloration that Spirit's mom has in the movie Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron. And this is how a Tobiano Palomino looks, which is exactly how I envisioned my Applejack. It's all coming together, guys. So yeah, color-wise, Applejack took much less time than Twilight because I already had a rough idea of what I wanted to do. So let me know what you think of her design. As an added bonus, I thought it would be fun to also design an alicorn form for Applejack. I do have some story reasons for this design as well, which I will get into in a bit. But for the design itself, I decided to go for the Cadence and Luna body for Applejack to represent her being a secondary power alicorn as opposed to an all-powerful godlike entity like Celestia, though I suppose all alicorns are classified as godlike beings anyway. I had to be careful not to accidentally give her Celestia proportions though. It was much easier done than I thought, but I figured out it was mostly in the leg length. It may look like the slim tall mares have longer legs than the basic mares, but really their torsos and legs are just a lot thinner, which creates more empty space between the ground and their torso that their legs need to reach up and fill. Now for the eyes, remember when I talked about how one of my biggest issues with Celestial Twilight was how her eyes looked entirely too big for Celestia's body and head? Well, to avoid that issue for Applejack, I decided to do a half-lid expression instead, which I think also makes her look more refined and mature. Then I added her wings, which I referenced from Cadence's wings, and while I really like how the wings are drawn, I realized that they actually took inspiration from the stylization of the Gen 1 pony wings. But I thought Gen 3 did the Pegasus wings best. I love this little swirl they used to do for the Gen 3 wings, and the little wings they did on the dolls were so stinking cute. And you know what? Gen 3 had some of the best pony designs of the entire franchise, and it's purely because of the Pegasi, but specifically Starcatcher. Just look at her! And yeah, I'll say it, I actually prefer how they used to draw the ponies compared to Gen 4 and 5. These were the ponies that made me think, man, I'd love to have one as my own. And guess what? I did! My first pony toys were the Generation 3 models, and my dream pony doll to this day continues to be Starflight from the 2008 Deluxe Pegasus Pony line. And holy shit, this was where my color scheme came from. 
One thing that I hate about G4 was how they would poke fun at the older art style like it was ugly or crazy looking. Even though I, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people who grew up with them, found them very endearing. Plus, those were your roots, MLP. And now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure Celestia's body was probably inspired by the Gen 2 dolls, which were longer and lankier compared to the other generations. So it really goes to show that MLP wouldn't be here without these generations. And at the risk of sounding like a boomer, the older generations looked way better because they actually still looked like horses. That was the appeal of My Little Pony. Horses. <laughs> you shouldn't be making fun of it to seem down with the audience or self-aware, because the only people who were making fun of it were bronies, whose basis for not liking them in the first place was because they're not attracted to it. Surely that's not an audience you should be pandering to. But that's probably enough ranting for me. For my Alicorn AJ design, I pretty much just translated her Earth Pony redesign over, though I did come across a bit of a dilemma regarding which side her braid should be on. Based on my own design, it should technically fall on her left side, so since she's facing left here, her braid should be facing the viewer. However, I also just really liked how the braid looked facing away from us, because you could see her body better and it made her look more sleek. I wrestled with that for a while before I finally decided to go with the braid facing toward us for design consistency. I added her hat because I feel like as an immortal god, Applejack would probably like to keep a memento from her days as a regular mare. And I styled her horseshoes and chest plate after apples. It's kind of silly that I tried to design my own when canonically in the show, the elements of harmony manifest as necklaces that Twilight's friends wear. It also dawned on me a little too late that she would probably also want to wear Granny Smith's shawl as a tribute to her, just like in the series finale, so I decided to add that element as a bonus later on. Now, lore-wise, the reason I wanted to make Applejack an alicorn was because, as several people pointed out in my comment section, it wasn't really fair that Twilight was the only pony in the main six to become an alicorn, when she wouldn't have become an alicorn and discovered friendship magic if it weren't for her friends. And each of the main six members accomplished just as impressive feats throughout the show worthy of ascending them to godhood as well. Plus, I think it would help to balance out the power dynamics in the group, and for lore reasons, it would also reinforce the message that Twilight needs her friends. She can't succeed Celestia and rule Equestria alone. And she didn't do any of it alone, she always had her friends helping her. And it's also symbolic of how friendships are everlasting and can transcend more than one lifetime. Because if Twilight ascends to godhood through the power of friendship, then obviously the individual elements of friendship should bestow some sort of power to their bearers as well, right? Because you can't have friendship without those elements. Thus, as long as friendship exists in Equestria, so too will those elements. So I guess if we were to rewrite the ending of My Little Pony, I would want all the members of the main six to become alicorns. Just to be fair, because I know that each of the characters were someone's favorite, so obviously they'd want equal attention to those characters. But they'd still be under Twilight's jurisdiction as opposed to individual rulers, and their duties would be supporting and advising Twilight, as well as handling friendship matters corresponding to their individual elements. Also, from a business standpoint, think of all the new Alicorn toys Hasbro could sell. And possibly, they could even make bases for each of the alicorns, which would result in additional playsets that parents can buy for their children. But anyway, let me know what you think of my alicorn design for Applejack. I decided to add little spots to her wings to match her freckles, and to me they kind of looked like little apple seeds, which I thought were cute. Let me know what you think of my Applejack designs in the comments below, and if you want to see more MLP redesigns. Thank you so much for hanging out in my channel for a while. I hope your skin didn't get too pruney. Big shout out to my lovely pond dwellers on Patreon. If you want to become a pond dweller and get early access to my content, join my Patreon. 
If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. If you want to submit fan art or chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want more of my stories, check out my Wild Word series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!